Hello, my name is Peter Lear, and I would like to present you the result from recent listening tests where we compared conventional hearing loss compensation algorithms with deep learning based hearing loss compensation algorithms that were derived using auditory models. The content of this talk will be as follows. First, I'll be giving a short introduction to the use of DNNs in hearing aid technology and why the focus has been almost only on developing DNN-based noise reduction systems. Then I'll be outlining our approach to generating DNN-based hearing loss compensation. Finally, I'll present the results from using the DNN-based hearing loss compensation in a listening test with elderly hearing impaired individuals. From a signal processing point of view, a hearing aid usually consists of three main blocks. A noise reduction block, followed by a gain and compression block, which we call hearing loss compensation, and then an anti-feedback block. Now, in the last few years, there has been a huge development in the DNN-based noise reduction algorithms that often perform much better than their classical signal processing counterparts. On the other hand, there has not really been a similar development of hearing loss compensation systems. Now, these systems are still based on classic quasi-linear or compressive systems, which are not very expressive and therefore they might not adequately compensate for the perceptual deficits of a hearing loss. So why have we seen such a huge effort in developing DNN-based noise reduction, but very little effort in DNN-based hearing loss compensation? Now, I think this disparity could be attributed to three factors that are true when you develop a DNN-based noise reduction system. First off, there's a lot of accessible data, which includes both recorded natural data and realistic synthetic data. But most importantly, the target is always available in the dataset and theoretically attainable. That is, if we can match the waveform to the ground truth target, we have achieved the task of noise reduction. And even if we cannot perform perfect waveform matching, there are well-established easy-to-compare metrics that allows for easy iteration and comparison. And if you don't trust this, you can just use your own ears as a sanity check. So all these three are not true for our hearing loss compensation systems. And in particular, we don't have any way to generate ideal targets. Therefore, we have to generate surrogate targets. And one such way is by using an auditory model. The idea of using auditory models to derive hearing loss compensation algorithms is not new. Already in 1978, Biondi suggested to use auditory models in the following way. Take some stimuli and feed it through two branches. In the first upper branch, you feed the stimulus to an auditory model of a normal hearing subject. The output of this model could be a physiological response, such as the basilar membrane velocity or the auditory nerve firing rate. In the other branch, you feed the stimuli through a hearing aid, and the output of the hearing aid is then fed through an auditory model of a hearing impaired subject. The difference between the two physiological responses are then minimized by tuning the parameters of the hearing aid. Once this tuning is complete, you can then use this hearing aid for hearing loss compensation. However, because we primarily are interested in testing these systems in difficult and noisy conditions, we changed the framework from before to include a realistic noisy source, which is by default added to both the upper and the lower branch. Thus, the task of the DNN becomes to minimize the difference between the two noisy physiological responses. We call the DNN derived this way, DNN-HLC. We also train another DNN to additionally perform noise reduction by not feeding noise to the normal hearing auditory model. In this case, the task of the DNN becomes to match the noisy hearing impaired response with the clean normal hearing response, which we call the DNN HLCNR. In particular, we use the Gilani model that outputs expected firing rates of low, medium and high spontaneous activity nerve fibers, since they all have different transduction shapes. We assume the spontaneous activity to be identical for the normal and hearing impaired person and model away the spontaneous firing rate that was not a function of the input stimuli. We used a loss function that computed the mean absolute error between the normal and hearing impaired model at three time scales, one millisecond, 10 milliseconds, and 100 milliseconds 
together with a small term that penalized spurious, very low frequency drift behavior that was not captured by the auditory model. In order to test the validity of our proposed approach, we would like to measure two things. First, we would like to measure if a DNN-based approach can outperform a conventional approach in terms of intelligibility. We use a hearing and noise test to measure this. Secondly, we would like to measure if the DNN-based approach can outperform a conventional approach in terms of preference. We use a Musher style test to measure this. We tested 13 elderly hearing impaired individuals with mild to moderate severe hearing losses. For all individuals, we tested five different systems. One, the unpro signal. Two, the signal processed by NAL-R. Three, the DNN-based HLC, which had no noise reduction. Four, a generic DNN-based noise reduction followed by NAL-R. And five, the same DNN that was used for noise reduction as a joint DNN, HLC, and noise reduction strategy, as we explained earlier. All signals were normalized to be at similar levels and presented at a personalized audible level, which was found pre-experiment for each hearing impaired individual. For the hint test, we tested our systems at 0 dBSNR and 3 dBSNR using 8 talker bevel noise. We found that the DNN HLC gave the best average score for both SNRs, but we found that none of the relevant comparisons were statistically significant after correcting for multiple comparisons. Using a linear mixed model, we found that all systems improved from the baseline unprocessed system, and although the predicted effect from the DNN-based HLC was largest, there was no statistical evidence that either of the systems were better than the other, except for the unprocessed baseline. Similarly, we conducted a Musha test. We used utterances from the Danish hint test, but now presented at 9 dBSNR. We included a pseudo anchor, which was the unprocessed system, at 3 dBSNR. The systems were rated between 0, indicating the least preferred system, to 100, which indicated the most preferred system. For the Musher test, we found that the joint hearing loss compensation and noise reduction system was the most preferred system. Looking at the smooth histograms, we see a very skewed distribution where most of the people preferred the joint system most of the time. In general, people also preferred the DNN-based hearing loss compensation over NAL-R. All comparisons were significant after the correction. To sum up, we found that the trained DNNs were significantly better than a system with no processing, but we could not prove that the DNNs were significantly better than a conventional approach in terms of intelligibility. In terms of quality, we found that the people preferred the proposed DNN-based joint hearing loss compensation and noise reduction system. If you are interested in our work, we would refer to these two papers, which both are available on archive. Thank you.